good evening to you, viewers. How are you doing? Well, the last Sunday in the month of July. Wow, the seventh month has almost gone. I rare. Inching close to August. Well, we take, we take this opportunity to um, thank you for your feedback. Um, of course, this is the Church of the Nazarene Baptist District Family Forum. And uh, we've been trying to tackle some issues, um, not preach at you, but tackle some issues that impact family because we are of the opinion that as we zero in on some of these issues relative to family, that it will help to build a better Barbados. Therefore, we are asking, we are asking God to guide us because we try not to focus on issues that we think that we should, but we ask God to guide us in the process. Um, so I want to start by sharing this, a familiar portion. God is a refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Um, that's for Psalm 46, verse 1 and 2a. Um, we are talking today, the second part of this um, series, coping in crisis, and uh, we believe that God is aware of the crises that we face. There are those who think he's absent, he's taken leave and left us mm. to struggle on our own. But I want to declare that is not the case. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. And, and if I could jump in here. Yes. Friday, mm -hmm. um, good evening to everyone. Yes. Um, I, I think that's, that's uh, a very important and uh, um, pertinent, you know, statement that God is with us in the crisis. That's right. You know, um, the whole deist idea of of God winning the world up and leaving the run down, <laughs> you know, um, does not square. He's abandoned us. Does <laughs> not square with the ever-present help of mm -hmm. the God that we serve. Yes. You know, who is in the midst, mm -hmm. and and I think that's the purpose to note because. Because sometimes our, our, our thinking or our theology um, can, can seem to, to, to create a, a God who's only present when there's success, mm -hmm. you know, uh, when there is a, a sense of, of us doing well, we talk about divine favor. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's a reality in yeah. the life of the believer. Mm -hmm. But there are also times of crisis when, yes. when outside becomes dark. Metaphorically mm -hmm. speaking, mm -hmm. you know, uh, when there's no, no light, you know, yes. uh, in our lives, you know, having the assurance of a God who is present in those moments yes. uh, become critical. Yes. Uh, life saving as well too, because mm -hmm. what it says is that it doesn't matter how dark it gets, mm -hmm. we serve a God who's with, who's us. with us. Amen. And that's important. And um, that is the message we want to share this evening, yeah. in the midst of the crisis that we are going through. Just want to remind you that God has not is not absent. He's with us, and He will work with us through this. And of course, in process, it's not being cliche. As you come through this, we will be stronger as a nation, stronger as families. Depends on how we approach. Father, we thank you again for this facility that we can share with the public and the nation on issues pertaining to the family, how we can grapple with them. I pray that you will guide us into all truth this evening as we share in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, viewers, we'll be back with you in a moment. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. All right, when we had our breaks just now, we were making a point that God is with us. In, and we really want to make that point, reinforce that point. 
He's with us in the time of crisis. When we feel helpless, when we've lost control, he is never out of control. That's the thing about it. So if he's with us and he's supporting us, we, we agree that we have our part to play. But I think the fact that God is in control and he's with us as a people gives us an assurance that we're going we're gonna to make it. We're going to make it. I just want to share with you a little illustration here using an analogy of a mountain climber um, by James Boyce. He says, as I said, an analogy of a mountain climber tied to his guide with a rope. Though the route is treacherous and uh, he often slips, he doesn't fall to his death. Why? Because of the rope that is tied to the guide. We are saying that God is our, Christ is our guide who never slips. And the rope that ties us securely to him is his great love for us. So even in times of crisis, it is as if we're climbing the mountains of life, so to speak. But we are tied to God by his love. And he will not allow us to be destroyed in the process. Keep holding on to him. Aaron Kelman. <laughs> yes, Robert Farley. Um, hmm. With an apt illustration, though, and uh, I want to go one step further and to mm -hmm. see that the rope gets even, even stronger in our crisis. <laughs> you know, uh, How so? Um, because... <laughs> Because we can, we can trust God to, 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 to carry off full weight. Amen. Amen. Right? Um, we but can, even when you're so weak, can we kind yes, of hold on? Yes, yes, yes. So, <laughs> he so, holds us. Right. So when, when, when we can put it 10%, he puts it in 90%. Yes. Right? When uh -huh. we can put 40%, he puts it in 60%. Yes. So, so when we can't put it anything at all, yes. right, he holds us still. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that, that really has, to do, that really has to, to do with our own faith. Our faith. In terms of... We have to God. believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking through the we're going through the whole issue of the Ross's um, stages of, of loss mm -hmm. and crisis, and uh, we we spoke about anger, and I think the next stage has to be bargaining. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, um, and that that speaks to the whole idea. With whom are we bargaining? Often it's with God. <laughs> in most times, um, in most cases. You know, God, what is this happening? You know, uh -huh. if you do A, B, or C, I'll do X, Y, or Z. You know, and that bargaining is a part of us trying to hold on, mm -hmm. you know, in a, as, as it were, you know, to some, some form of reality mm -hmm. that is so difficult for us to You know, we, in, the, in the Barbadian context, I suppose this is understood. In our bargaining process, you may even say, Lord, I thought it's often felt that you're a Barbadian, or you're mm -hmm. a Bajan. You know, you heard people say, God is a Bajan, so nothing is going to come to us. Yeah, don't, don't make it, though. Yes, I've heard that statement say. <laughs> Um, but he also, he's also other nationalities, right? Yes. But I think that's also for our body now mechanism. The now, yes. You know, um, Not prepare ourselves. Yes, yes. yes, that's right. We have to think that we have some, some, yeah. some comfort in something else mm -hmm. that I mean, doesn't really exist. You yes, know? Um, yes. Because don't forget we're all in the process of the now. Yes. Right? Um, mm -hmm. If we were to acknowledge all that could happen at any given time, yeah. we'd be scared stiff. You that's know? it. That's it. Um, but then we just take it a different level mm -hmm. with reference to those kinds of, yeah. of, of statements. But yes, bargaining is a normal part mm -hmm. of the whole um, engagement process yes. uh, in dealing with, with the issues of loss. And then, of course, comes the I'm of depression, mm -hmm. and that's the that's the, the difficult part. Yeah, uh, we relate. That's that. really the lowest point, yes. emotional point in the whole process. Yes, that's right. It is that you know that, that things are the way they are. Mm -hmm. I mean, the losses are are real. Mm -hmm. You know. So you've come out of the shock. Of the shock. Yes. Perhaps there's not as much anger there, yeah. and all of a, all of a sudden, you, you, the reality hits home. Yes. And, and depression steps in. Yes. How how are you gonna cope with that? Yeah. Uh, what what are some of the Signs of depression. Yeah. Do people know that they're depressed? Is it possible that we can be depressed and don't know? Well, well, I think most persons who are depressed will be aware of their of their depressed state. <laughs> don't want to call it that. Um, they don't want to call it that. They might yes. want to uh, call it, say I'm feeling down, or you know, or they might try to you know sublimate it, mm -hmm. you know, and say things that I'm too blessed to be stressed and yes. those sort of things. But you know that. But what about the whole idea that 
um, some Christians project and they will say that, well, a Christian cannot be this depressed. Right. Well, if that's, if that's true, then it means that Elijah was not, a, was not a, a powerful man of God because Elijah represents classic depression. Yes, yes. You know, mm -hmm. um, of course... Just some, after Mount Carmel. Yes, yeah, some argue that there was yes. some burnout in there as well, too. Mm -hmm. Yes, but mm -hmm. there was also uh, the signs of depression. He was sleeping, mm -hmm. you know. Um, uh, there was signs of, of fatalism. You felt like giving up. You know, giving up. You said, mm -hmm. you know, just take my life, you know. Yeah. Right, Lord, you yeah. know. And, and the whole idea of self-pity. And, and the, whole, the whole idea of him moving... Deeper and deeper in the cave. Yes. Speaks of yes. of of moving deeper and deeper into the darkness. Yes. Yes. Uh, of depression. But you know, we when we say that God is with us, this is true that God found him. God asked him, "What are you doing here? That's right. right in the cave." That's right. So even in this situation we are going to right now in Barbados, there are those perhaps who might have resorted to their cave, or who you know, in hiding, hiding, in, but not hiding in a sense, but from situations and hoping it was just somehow. I, I, Disappear? I think we're afraid that we need to call things as they are. Yes. Right? So uh, we can address them. We can address them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, in, 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 in language uh, philosophy, you know, um, you know, we can study those, those language philosophers. Um, if we can't name it, then chances are we can't deal with it. Yes. Right? When we name something, mm -hmm. um, then it gives us the opportunity. Mm -hmm. To see what options that are. It doesn't available. mean that we are, we are labeling ourselves. And, and that's what I said to you earlier that <coughs> we, have, we have to disabuse ourselves of the of the notion that because we're having some some mental challenge, mm -hmm. we're not Christians or we're not yes. are we not spirit filled. Forgetting that we are human beings. We're human beings, yes. right? And but Reverend Kelman, we as ministers have to be very clear about that because unfortunately. I, we are ministers, but unfortunately, sometimes some ministers can convey the fact. I've heard it myself. Of course. You're sick? No, no Christian can't be sick. Yeah. You know, you probably have done something wrong. Yeah. You remember or, Job? Or, 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 what your or, friends or, told him? Or, 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 or there's a demon uh, behaving be wrong. And you want to cast a demon? You know, um, and, uh, and I think we need to be very, very uh, careful. Yes. You know, um, you don't cause harm. And uh, I've been a little bit. A little bit carefully here to myself, <laughs> but um, there are many persons who have been hurt, you know, beyond repair mm -hmm. uh, because of unwise counsel mm -hmm. in that regard. Which, which, who, which, in truth, who, in who, fact, who, who, who died, yes, know? twisted, twisted theology, yes, in the name of theology. Yes. So we have to be so aware. We have, we have to understand that they can, there is such a thing as spiritual abuse. Yes spiritual abuse, and we have to be real. Yes. And in the context of what we are going through, we want to know that people understand that God can help. That's right. And we, the church can facilitate the process. Right. And, and I think that <coughs> part of the whole issue of, of depression, of uh, treatment of depression, is for persons who want to be able to articulate how they feel too. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, for us as, as, as the body, mm -hmm. uh, to create a kind of loving context. Yes. Uh, where persons can know that- And feel safe. That we care, and, yes. and, yes, and, yes, and, yes, and they're not safe. condemned. Right, and mm -hmm. of course, uh, there are times when depression might linger. Yes. Now, now we don't understand that the depression that we talk, talk about here, the Kubler-Ross's model, is a, a normal part of that whole uh, process of, of, of loss and, and change. Getting back to wholeness. Right. But uh -huh. mm -hmm. there are times when there may be an underlying condition. Yes. And it can be a fixation. That, that can, mm -hmm. that can, you know, be, be, can influence that entire depressive process. Yes. So yes, you you have a crisis. Mm -hmm. Before the crisis, there was a a kind of a, a depressive disorder you were you were you were going through, and the question now makes it worse. Yes. And there are times where you might need to probably see your uh, your doctor, your psychiatrist, you know, a counselor, a, co a counselor, a pastor. You know, but even if you have some sort of course of medication. Yes. Yes. And again, mm -hmm. uh, one should not see that as as a, a, a you know an invalidation of their faith. Yes. You yes. Know, but recognizing that. Even in terms of our faith, mm -hmm. there are times when we do have that level of, uh, of medical intervention. Yeah, because well. people sometimes get very disoriented in depression. And, yes. and uh, I think we have to change some mindsets because of, of, of accepting help. Because there are people who say, well, I'm not mad, I'm not crazy, I'm not going to any counselor, I'm not going to any psychiatrist, I'm not going to any clinical psychologist because I'm not mad. But, but they understand that we all have the, the, the propensity to have, to be ill mentally. Yes, right. Yeah? 
And therefore, why do we have to label it as madness? Yeah. I think it's a social issue as well, too, yes. because, because we, we are, we, we stigmatize um, yes. mental issues. Mental issues, you know? yeah. Um, a broken leg is a broken leg, you know, but mm -hmm. yes. if you have, uh, you know, a mind that, that, is, that is under some level of pressure, of pressure. Then that's a difficult about you. Yes. And I think that that's part of our own um, challenge we have to kind of... Do some reteaching, uh, reteaching, you know, some reteaching, yes. Because, um, I mean, persons do have uh, mental challenges, but yes. once they are, you know, experienced the kind of care that they, that they, that they, mm -hmm. they should... We can sum out it. They can they can live and function well yes. uh, for, for, for all their life, mm -hmm. you know. And to me, that's the yeah. that's the point which I want to make. Yeah. But I also want to I want to say though that it doesn't stop there. Depression, mm -hmm. you know, as time goes by, we give a test, mm -hmm. you know, and it moves towards a greater acceptance. Yes, and, uh, and we can even which is, which is a good thing. Yes, mm -hmm. and we can even begin yes. to reinvent ourselves. Mm -hmm. yes. you know, as we as we move forward. And as as was said earlier on, the whole idea of depression is the lowest point. Right. So when we accept, there's that, there's that claim out of that well, so the, to the speak. The testing of the acceptance. Yes. yes. That, 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 that um, recovery can be a long process. Yes. I remember, you know, when I was in every country, they, they were inundated by, mm -hmm. by um, so the waters from, from a hurricane. Yeah. And they lost quite a bit of, of their infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, as I listened to the, to the, the, the whole process of rebuilding, uh, the guys say, you know, yes, we lost quite a bit of our buildings, but we're, but, but we're rebuilding stronger. Amen. Right? Yes. And, and I thought that was an apt illustration because... That's the mindset. Because, because in the crisis, mm -hmm. you know, we can rebuild stronger. Yes. You know, we can rebuild mm -hmm. the sense of greater... Uh, we can become more robust, yes. you know, even in terms of our own thinking. Um, mm -hmm. our, our connection with material things can go through that whole... Mm -hmm. uh, change because yeah. now we realize that these things are, are very temporal. And not as important as we thought they were. And, right, and so mm -hmm. our faith might be fired even yes. in terms yes. of our of our of our crisis. In terms of in terms also of our prioritizing our value. That's right. I think during this pandemic, um, as well, a lot of people have heard said, you know, they've realize and they do some realignment in terms of the importance of family, family. the importance of work, the importance of Money, period. The critical nature of relationships, building relationships, and sustaining them, mm -hmm. how important they are. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we put that low down <laughs> the ladder, so to speak. Yeah. And we focus a lot on being successful in the job and so on, being successful in the workplace. But look, the workplace became home. That's right. <laughs> so. Yeah. And, and, and I think you made a critical point, though, that, that one of the issues that have emerged, you know, even during this time, mm -hmm. is the need for us to build strong families yes. and to connect well with our families mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. uh, many persons were just supposed in the in the same space. Yes, you know, um, acting the person who, who have become strange over the years. Yes, you know, and I think it really calls us back mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. recognizing that families are are crucial mm -hmm. and that you know as we spend work building building our careers, spend mm -hmm. time, sorry, yes, building our careers. We should also spend quality time building our families. Very well. important, very yes. important. I want to um, spend a few minutes um, sharing this extract. Um, you made a point just now of rebuilding stronger. And I think this um, reading here talks about adversity and the lesson of the coffee bean. Uh, just give me a few minutes to share it, and then we'll um, see what lessons we can learn from it. A daughter complained to her father about how hard things were for her. As soon as I saw one problem, she said, another one comes up. I'm tired of struggling. Sound familiar? <laughs> her father, a chef, took her to the kitchen where he filled three pots with water and placed each on a high fire. Soon, the pot came to boil. In one of them, he placed carrots. In the second, he placed eggs. In the last, ground coffee. Coffee beans, I'm sorry. And he let them sit and boil without saying a word. The daughter impatiently waited, wondering what he was doing. After a while, he went over and turned the burners off. 
He fished out the carrots and placed them in a bowl. He pulled the eggs out and placed them in a bowl as well. He poured the coffee into another bowl. Turning to her, he asked, darling, what do you see? Carrots, eggs, and coffee, she replied. He brought her closer and asked her to feed the carrots. She did and noted that they were soft. Then he asked her to take an egg and break it. After pulling off the shell, she observed the hard-boiled egg. Finally, he asked her to sip the coffee. She smiled as she tasted its rich flavor. She asked, what does it mean, Father? He explained that each of them, each of them had faced the same adversity, boiling water, but each reacted differently. The carrot went in strong and hard and unrelenting, but after being subject to the boiling water, it softened and became weak. The egg was fragile. Its thin outer shell had protected its liquid interior. But after sitting through the boiling water, it, its inside hardened. The ground coffee beans were unique. However, by being in the boiling water, they changed the water. He asked his daughter, when adversity knocks you on the door, which one are you? Mm. That's a very good question. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you change your, your situation by your, by, your, by your responses, or do you allow um, the situation to change you mm -hmm. as a person? Yes. yes. Well, food for thought. Food for thought, um, viewers, we'll be back in a moment as you meditate on that little reading. God bless you. Good luck in a moment. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Well, it's good about with you this evening and... Um, I think one of the points you wanted to, to make, though, uh, has to do with the fact that even though persons may be in a crisis and going through a crisis, uh, let's say, for example, uh, a hurricane or, or some other um, you know, uh, tragedy or trauma, and uh, maybe rebuilding physically, I, I want to also uh, challenge, you know, challenge us all to also rebuild emotionally. That's right. And, mm -hmm. and, and what they're finding now is that the psychosocial domain of persons' lives sometimes becomes, you know, um, persons, persons don't attend to it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. and though they may have a house that they've rebuilt, yet they're still in a place where uh, they've not worked through the trauma yes. of what, 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 what happened mm -hmm. um, prior. And so um, it is necessary we want to emphasize this, mm -hmm. that even as we rebuild infrastructure, as we rebuild our lives, that we also look at how do we deal with the trauma so that it's a continue. We rebuild our lives and, as well. And, and maybe even mm -hmm. find itself mm -hmm. in other generations. That's right. And the other traumas as well. Yes. Uh, for there are things like rape, you know, mm -hmm. um, sexual abuse. You know, we, yes. we're not talking much about that today because mm -hmm. yeah. we're focusing more on on the crisis that are mm -hmm. upon us now, mm -hmm. which if they're not dealt with, you yes. can find that they will, you know, uh, stay with that individual for all their lives. Yes. In part, how they, how they parent the children, yes. you know, and therefore there's a generational component. Oh, dysfunctional. Those, Dysfunction. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, yeah, very, very true. So, um, viewers, we're saying that some of these situations are very far-reaching. But these are things that uh, can be dealt with, and there are persons in the community um, that can help. Um, don't think you have to stay in under your cover, as it were, and suffer. I think sometimes when I people suffer thinking that there's no help over there. Yeah, and, and sometimes... The awareness that there's help. Yeah, and sometimes we, we, we create a kind of a toughness culture mm -hmm. that says, you gotta handle your stuff like so a man. So you can't be vulnerable. So you can't be vulnerable. Don't 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 share your stuff. No. You know, deal with yourself on your yes. own. You're a big man. You're or big 
are in the church, tell it all to Jesus. Yes. And that's, that also is a very But the Bible serious. says that we have to bear one another's burdens, burdens yes. in, in Galatians you know, chapter 6. That's right, that's right. Both are important. And, and that's we have the community. The, yes. the community of the church yes. is supposed to be a healing community. Yeah. I mean, in 1 Corinthians 12, it says, if one part of the body hurts, entire body, the entire body hurts. Yes. And that's the context that can be seen in a family, can be seen in a church, can be seen in a country. And, and I think, though, that persons need to understand their role as the body in the body of Christ mm -hmm. in terms of that we're given to each other. Yes. And uh, yes. the element of confidentiality, those mm -hmm. should never be a, a, a challenge to the church because yes. we understand, or we it's understand important. our role mm -hmm. in terms of facilitating, yes. as he was, um, suggests, yes. of spreading a lot of love and good yes. works. Yes. You know, if we understand that that's our role, then. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe that yes. a lot of things that happen would not happen. Because sometimes I think we have made a mistake to think that um, Christianity is a one-man a one man thing. Yeah. We have to understand there's no one-man Christian out there. Yeah. We need community and, and, and to I think, function. And I think that that's one of the, one of the, one of the uh, realities of our, of our own tradition mm -hmm. in terms of you know, the fact that you know, that salvation is a personal yes. um, decision. That's right. But it must also result mm -hmm. in a, 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 a sense of communal yes. living and yes. understanding as well. It springs out of the right? individual uh, inter yes. interactive relationship That's with right. God That's right. and with man. And the community of mm -hmm. is as critical as anything else. I mean, love yes. all of the hearts, for the mind, yes. and every neighbor as yourself. So yeah. That's what Jesus said. The horizontal has yeah. to be yeah. in tandem. Yes. And and, you know, I really want to emphasize that, though, because mm -hmm. I, I do not know mm -hmm. that as believers mm -hmm. that we understand the power of community. that's raised in the community. Mm -hmm. But Reverend Kalman, it's not, I mean, we're going to end this note. Uh, coincidentally, incidentally, because we're saying, yes, there's God. But, yes, there is support, that communal support. I mean, we, you know that as counselors, we're issues persons are going through rough times. And there is support, whether from the family or church, the person heals faster. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and that really ought to be yes. um, our, our concern. Can't our do it alone. Mm -hmm. um, of, of being able to, be able yes. to carry the beer yes. each other's burdens. Well, a closing prayer. <laughs> Father, we give you thanks today for this time of discussion. And Lord, we know that there are many persons out there who have experience crisis and trauma in their lives. And I pray, God, that this program will be the, the start for them to a life of, of transformation and healing. I pray, God, you will move in their hearts even now. And they will seek, Lord, help beyond this program so as to facilitate, Father, their own growth and their own transformation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless you.